Good morning. Welcome to Children's Church. Today is a June the 7th, oh, let's 2020. Um, I don't know if you remember me. It's been some time. I'm Miss Beth Littleton, and we've got Miss Hope here, and I'm going to kind of lead um, under her guidance. She's helping me and mentoring me in this, and I <laughs> appreciate that. Um, and so we'll begin with prayer, right. and then we'll start uh, explaining the contents of the packet that we sent out to you, and we'll get right into the lesson, okay? Do you want to pray for us? Sure, sure. Thank you. Dear Heavenly Father, God, we just thank you so much for this day, God, for the beautiful sun that you've given us today, Lord. We thank you for the message that you prepared for our hearts, Lord God. We're going to be learning about Jesus and John and how they pointed everyone to Jesus, God. And we just thank you so much for your word and for your love. And uh, we ask that you be with us throughout the day. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you. All right, so we mailed you a packet earlier this week. Hopefully you've got it. So, as always, you've got your um, little, uh, looks like a journal. bulletin type thing. And on the back, you've got your journal with some questions. And, you know, we encourage you to take notes as you listen to um, the lesson. Then um, we sent you some pages. This is the Bible story. A little different this week. We put it on front and back. So, don't get lost. That We just go to the back. Um, there's a little activity page here about... Uh, the greatest to the least of what is your favorite or what you value the most. Okay, the next one is a fill in the blank activity. Okay, John or Jesus, and you're going to go through this, and here's your words. And then this is just a coloring page, and uh, maybe for the younger kids, um, it's got your story point, and you can do the um, coloring page. Anybody can do that. I like to color, don't you? Oh, yes. <laughs> okay, so that's the contents of your um, uh, packet. So, Today's Bible passage is going to come from Matthew chapter 3, John chapter 1, and John chapter 3. Okay, our story point for today is John the Baptist told people to follow Jesus. All right, and our key passage is still John 3.30. Yes. Okay, and John 3.30 is he must increase but I must decrease. And we talked a little bit about that last week, yes. about what that looks like, and we're just going to study a little more about what that looks like um, with John, okay? All right, so let's get started. You can follow along on your Bible story page, all right? Jesus and his disciples went out into the countryside. People came to see them, and Jesus taught the people. Many people were baptized. Nearby, John the Baptist was baptizing people, too. And funny thing, that's why they call him, we refer to him as John the Baptist. Right. That was not his name, per se. Mm -hmm. um, he was known for baptizing, and more importantly, he was named for baptizing Jesus. Right. So, mm -hmm. and, uh, John the Baptist was ba baptizing people, too. Some of the people who followed John got into an argument. Mm -hmm. They went to John, and they said, Teacher, remember the one who ta uh, you talked about? The one who was with you on the other side of the Jordan River. And he was referring to Jesus. Mm -hmm. His disciples are baptizing people, and people are starting to follow them. So they were a little confused at what was going on. Like, who's the real, who's the real Christ, the real right. Messiah? You know, you've got this one person over here baptizing, mm -hmm. but you've got somebody on the other side of the river baptizing people following him. Mm -hmm. So as you can see, we're going to talk a little bit about that and how he responded, okay? So just keep that in mind. It's a little confusion. Mm -hmm. John's followers were talking about Jesus, so Jesus was the one on the other side. John answered them, You heard me say that I am not the Messiah. And another word for Messiah would be, um, the scripture uses the Christ. Right. So Jesus, he's not the Christ. He's not God's chosen one. He's not the one that's going to save his people from their sins. Right. He, and we're going to learn that J John's, whole purpose in life was to come and point people he was a he was the um would you say foreshadower of christ yep. to point people to christ that was his purpose and mission in life right. was to tell them before jesus come to earth actually i'm the messenger who goes before him to announce that he is coming this was true john had said someone greater than me is coming i am not worthy to remove his sandals I baptize you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. So, John, again, they were talking, the confusion, remember, John is letting them know, hey, yes, I can baptize you. We can go down to the river and I can baptize you with water, but Jesus does much more than that. Mm -hmm. He may, you know, he was, Jesus himself was baptizing people too, but he baptizes with the Holy Spirit. Okay? Yes. 
John tried to explain by talking about a wedding. And I think this was so cool. I actually learned this this week by studying this. Um, didn't know this, even though I read the Bible through a couple times myself. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you just miss some things. Right. When two people get married, the man who marries the bride is the groom. His friend stands with him at the wedding, and he is happy to be there and hear the groom's voice. And so just picture this. I know most of us have seen a wedding on TV, been to a wedding. Mm -hmm. You know, it's about the bride and groom. You're right. not there. You're just attending. You're celebrating them. That's where the focus is. You know, that's why they get all dressed up. The bride wears her dress and the groom. You know, it's about them. Mm -hmm. uh, but John was saying, John also knew that the wedding is the groom's special day. Right. You know, the groom's friend shouldn't make it about himself, like one of the best men or the groom's men. Yeah, they're a part of the wedding party. But again, the focal, focal point is on that covenant marriage between the husband and wife. Mm -hmm. So this is how John felt, like a groom's friend, because he was happy that Jesus, who was the Messiah or the Christ, had come. Jesus said in John 3.30, he, Jesus, must increase, I must decrease. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Then John explained why Jesus was more important than himself. Now, if you don't catch anything else, please listen to this. Okay? Why was Jesus more important uh, than John? John was from the earth. And so this is how he um, explained to the people about the baptizing on, well, wait, you've got followers, he's got followers. Well, what's the deal here? Mm -hmm. and he explained to them that Jesus is more important to him because John was like you and I. He was created. He was from the earth. Right. Right? And he could only talk about things on earth. Mm -hmm. But Jesus is God's chosen one. He is the one who comes from heaven. God sent him down from heaven to earth. Mm -hmm. And his purpose was to talk about things in heaven because he had seen them. Right? We know that uh, God existed before time in the Trinity. The Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Right? Mm -hmm. All of that. So still no one believed what Jesus said. All right? Why do you think that? Well, we're fixing to find out. All right. Whoever believes Jesus knows that God tells the truth. Right? God sent Jesus to the earth, and Jesus speaks God's words, which we know is the truth. Mm -hmm. Right? You know, there, there's truth in life. Um, you know, you can tell the truth or tell the lie. Mm -hmm. But I'll tell you one thing. If you want to know, you know, you can read a book that's nonfiction or fiction. But the, God's holy word, you can take it to the bank every time. Every time. And, you know, I would encourage you. I don't know if you did this or not, but in times of discouragement or distress or if I'm praying for something, you know, go to the Psalms. Pray those prayers to the Lord. In my distress, you know, I call out to you and you answer me. David said those prayers, you know, and I pray that back to the Lord. You know, right. God, I know you're listening. You said, you know, when you're feeling alone, even in these times with the covid you know, yes. God, you said that you would never leave me nor forsake me. Mm -hmm. Lord, you said that, and you can't lie. This is the truth. Right. So you're you're here, even though I may not be feeling it, you are here. And, and use yeah. that, meditate that, you know, to the Lord, but also to yourself. Mm -hmm. You know, speak that truth. Amen. Okay. The Father loves the Son and has given him, him power over everything. Whoever believes in the Son will have eternal life. But whoever refuses to believe in the Son will not have eternal life. What does that mean? You know, and that's one thing that I try to encourage you all every Sunday is to present the gospel. Mm -hmm. What does that mean that you'll have eternal life? Well, we know that if you die today and you don't believe, you haven't confessed, mm -hmm. and you haven't believed in your heart that Jesus was raised from the dead, then I'm sorry to say that there is no hope of eternal life. Right. I mean, there's only, there's two options. There's not this whole reincarnate thing that people think is going to happen. Mm -hmm. That you're going to come back as a something else or you're going to go up there and God's got a weight on your scales. And, well, I did good on this day, but not. So it kind of leveled out. So, yeah, no, it's through Jesus. Do you believe in Jesus as God's only son is your only hope? It was through his death, burial, and resurrection that there's any hope of eternal life for us. Mm -hmm. If not... Listen, what's going to happen? Uh, you're, you're, you refuse that? You're not going to have eternal life. And you will never be able to get away from God's judgment. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that's a scary thing, God. Yes. That's a scary thing to fall really into is. the hands, um, you know, of God's judgment. Mm -hmm. So let me 
um, end by saying that John the Baptist told people um, to get ready for Jesus, the promised Messiah. That was his mission. You know, we have a mission in life, and God gave that in Scripture that we're supposed to um, be presenting the gospel and making disciples of people. That's our job now, just as John's job was to pave the way for Jesus. Mm -hmm. And now that Jesus was on earth, John's mission was complete, right? He had went and done his done his time before Jesus came along, and then it was Jesus' time on earth to start moving and doing his ministry. Right. Jesus was greater than John, and John joyfully stepped aside as Jesus began his earthly ministry. Again, he was doing that decreasing mm -hmm. and allowing Christ to increase. And how powerful is that? Um, that powerful lesson today. Mm -hmm. I do encourage um, powerful lesson. All right, so we're going to get into our questions. All right, I'm going to read the question. This hope's going to answer. All right, so hopefully you were listening and taking notes, and you can answer these questions. All right, number one, what were Jesus and his disciples doing in the countryside? What were they doing in the countryside? Mm -hmm. so, hope they were baptizing people. <laughs> That's right. All right, number two, why were John's disciples arguing? Because they were, they were starting to follow Jesus instead of John. And we talked about that. Mm -hmm. All right, number three. What did John want to happen? John wanted Jesus to get the glory as the Messiah. And you can find these scriptures in John 3, 26. Well, let's just read that. And three, uh, John 3, 30. Okay, that's the he must increase, but I, decrease. I must decrease. That's John 3, 30. And then John 3, 26 says, And they came to John and said, Rabbi, he who is with you beyond the Jordan, to, to whom you have testified, behold, he is baptizing, and all are coming to him. Mm -hmm. Okay. Amen. Number four. All right. Number four. Why is it good to glorify Jesus? When we glorify him in our lives, we are fulfilling our purpose. And I talked about that. To live for purpose God. and mission, right? Yep. Yeah. All right. Number five. When is it hard to glorify Jesus? When we do well, we can thank God and remind other people about his goodness to bless us with their ta with talents or skills. All right. And the last one. All right. How can we learn to show humility? So first we have to understand who God is. You know, how, how big is God and how little are we? We have to be conscious of that. So God is the Messiah, and he is the story of our lives, and ultimately our lives are about him. Sure. All right. All right, I'm going to pray, and um, I hope you do the activities and took notes, and I hope this was a blessing to you. Read these. I would encourage you to read these chapters. I did. Mm -hmm. um, learn about them, and if you're not doing anything else, remember I tell you every time I get with you, read God's Word. Yes. You're not going to know how to live. You're not going to know your mission. You're not going to know your purpose. You're not going to know what Jesus did. You're not going to know anything about um, what he's called you to do if you're not reading what he's told you to do and what mm -hmm. he's told you to be. Okay? All right, let's, let's end in prayer. Father, thank you so much for this time. Thank you for this lesson. Thank you for the encouragement, God, that we have a mission. And thank you for John and the example that he was, that he went before you, before Christ. And um, that was his purpose, was to point um, them to you. And God, we have the same mission. We're to be pointing other people to you. And Lord, we pray through this video that someone um, would that you would open their eyes mm -hmm. and reveal yourself to them, Lord, that they might be saved and have that hope of eternal life. God, we thank you and we praise you. And uh, we love you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right. Bye-bye.